Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Thank you to all the new subscribers, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Yes. We'd really appreciate it. Um, man, we have an awesome show, huh, Stace? We do. You know Thane from the Mass Effect games? Voice director, coach, and actor Keith Farley is here. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Okay, you guys, you love our guest as Thane in the Mass Effect games, as Kellogg in Fallout 4. He is also an amazing voice director, coach, and the writer of Bat Boy the Musical. Mm. We love having him here. We're so excited to get buzzed with the wonderful Keith Farley. Yeah! That's you! Oh, wait, Keith! Hi. Oh, that's you, by the way. Shoot. He's like, I was like, Man. I can't but wait to meet this guy. Know, when does right? he come in? He's going to sit getting... next to me. This is great. <laughs> it's you, precious. Do we want to yeah. pick it up? Should we pick it up? He's so pretty. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> He's even more handsome in person, I'm just saying. Isn't out, he handsome? Man. He's very handsome. Flattery if I like dudes, you. I mm -hmm. would like you. <laughs> <laughs> How um, are you? I'm doing great. Thanks Thank for you being very much. Here. Oh my God, it's such an honor. It's such a thrill. Thank you. We are very, very excited. I'm really excited to be here. We um, appreciate that. That's very and nice. Thanks to Aaron Fitzgerald for getting us connected. Yeah. I love her. You How fake radio you... with her. And... There's no way to not love Aaron no. Fitzgerald. Absolutely. She is a, a goddess. I know. She really is. We love that's our a good Aaron. word for her. Yes, yeah. she is. Yeah. I think that's she a word that's a badass goddess. She's mm -hmm. a badass goddess. Yeah. Yes. Can we say that on YouTube? You can say is that. Is that an approved yeah. word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's an approved good to know. word. Exactly. Um, Do you have something to say, Chuck? Yes, I have questions, man. <laughs> um, so uh, this Me is really too. cool. I want to start off with this because it's, it's, it's so neat. So you started out as a radio DJ I in did. Sacramento, mm -hmm. right? Then you wound up in Los Angeles. So give us some highlights Fill in of some back of in the DJ days. Oh. The stories that you can tell us and how you actually got here to L.A. Did what you have a radio LA? name? No, I didn't, you know, but it's funny. Like those guys all have their... DJ names. My yeah. favorite was a guy that I met at KROI in Sacramento mm -hmm. who came in and he his his name was Mike Crow Fong. Nice. Get Mike it? Crow Fong. Microphone. Like microphone. Exactly. <laughs> he came with some chopsticks. <laughs> he was um, just like, it's microphone in the afternoon. Was he Asian? <laughs> he was. Was. Fong? Oh, so that's perfect. I love perfect. it. Yeah. Microphone. Well, because when, when Mark first. Elliott was here, he went through his whole list of radio names. Of radio names. names. And they were hilarious. So, But Keith Farley saw it. Tony Cox was the morning guy. Uh -huh. So it was yeah. Cox in the morning. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So they told you, you already have a radio name. Don't change it. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with Farley, Farley. Yeah, Farley, Farley. <laughs> <laughs> so give us some highlights. So back in the uh, DJ days, man, like what were some cool things? I'll tell you what. It was two to eight a.m. on Sunday morning. Wow. Two to eight a.m. on Sunday morning. That was the gig. I was I was yeah. seventeen years old. Wow. And I would just do. I started as as a. We had I had a, a friend's mom, who was dating a guy who worked at the radio station. Okay. So I started calling him up. I'm like, hey, it's Keith Farley. I'm I'm you know Bev Gandy's uh, kid's friend. Can yeah. I work at the station? And he was like, no. I was like, all right, I'll call you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Persistent. So nice. Persistent. I just kept calling him and calling him. He's probably like, all right, all right, come down here and do surveys. So I would come in at, after school and I would sit at a little desk and I would just cold call people and oh. ask them what songs they like to listen to. And they just had me doing interny type stuff. Yeah. But every day I would go in, I'd walk by the program director's office and say, hey, listen, if anything opens up, you know, I'm yeah. a DJ at my high school radio station. Ah, and yeah. If anything happens, I'm available. I got the chops. Here's and my card. Here's my card. <laughs> 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 and eventually, like three, four, five months later, they put me on. That's it? Sunday That's morning, fast. 2 a.m. Oh, my, you must have been so excited. It was the pre-church crowd. I was beside, exactly. Yes, everyone's exactly. waking up for worship. Yep. Yes. I would do my Saturdays, and then I would just go straight into work mm -hmm. at 2 a.m., and go two to eight. So I, from two to two forty, I was doing DJing, and then two forty to six thirty was public affairs programming, oh, which was all the stuff that yeah. they had to do yeah. to keep their license. Of course. And then at six thirty to eight, I was a DJ for all my pals who were getting up and getting ready to go to church. Right. Nice. So I'd meet them at church in the morning, and they'd be like, "Hey, nice show this morning." Yeah, I'd be like, "Right on." Good. So then I would go straight through church, and we get off, go out to brunch. Yeah. I get oh home goodness. about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Sunday after being up since like 
8 a.m. on Saturday morning and just sleep straight through till school mm. on Monday morning. Right. So, so like you wow. were not playing. Three in the afternoon till <laughs> 8 the next morning, wow. I would just sleep it off. This is just a hunch, but you were not playing ACDC between those hours, right? Uh, that, <laughs> no, that was, you know what they were going what for What kind of was, stuff were you, were you playing? It was, they, the, the format was adult rock. Adult rock. So I, the, the songs that I remember from that period that I will never get out of my head, Yeah. Um, Edge of Seventeen, Okay, Stevie great song. Nicks, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Shake It Up by the Cars Shake was huge. Shake It Up, oh good. <laughs> yes. that, that's always the speakers yeah, in yeah. the studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I would always turn it up a little bit for the Shake It Up. Yeah. yeah. And um, They just got inducted in the... Lunatic Fringe. In the hop. Yeah, right? Yeah. And The Police. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic. Oh, was another nice. one that was... Oh, that's great. That yeah. Ghost in the Machine yeah. record was... Oh, so yeah. you guys were playing some of the big smashes, man. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Big rock smashes. So cool, yeah. It was yeah, so yeah. much fun. And like I said, for that half an hour at the beginning <laughs> and the 90 minutes at the end, and the rest of it was just trying to get through the night. How long did you, did you were, the, were you the DJ, man? I was there about nine months. You were there for nine months, and yeah. then what happened after that? That was when they called me up and said that the, the studio owner had a kid who was going to take my place. Um, this is one of those radio. So, so you know but did I mean? you Nobody stays yeah, in radio. Yeah, everyone gets fired in radio. Did you continue to DJ after great. that? Or I did. did. You... I went to a um, contemporary Christian station in Davis and did afternoon drive. I did um, 2 to 8 p.m. every oh, day of nice. the week. Yeah, yeah. Six days a week. And that was an automated station, which was a gas, because they would give me the, you get the sheet, they was all reel to reel at yeah. the time. So they were like five reel to reels <laughs> lined up, and then the one at the front was me. So I got the number one reel, which had all the songs on it, I knew what songs they were, and I had the number six reel. So I could back announce number six, and front announce number one. Wow. And I would just do all my talking in one like hour, mm. two hours maybe, yeah. just to do all the front and back announcing. And then, uh, and then I had the rest of the evening to sort of do homework and monitor the station and <laughs> take care of everything. Oh my I was gosh, in college at the time, so I was 19. So you know, homework and- I love it. So, and we ran Gene Scott. You know, remember Gene Scott? No. He's no. a local dude who was crazy. He'd wear this like old fisherman's cap, and he had this big beard, and he had this great gospel quartet who would sing this oh. song, and he would make them play it again. That was his big thing, like play it again, <laughs> and they'd finish. Play it again. I want to hear that song again. Play it again. Uh, that's oh, great. it was great. That's a great character, huh? Yeah. He was. He was a character. Yeah, he I was love nut. it. Cool. So then, how did you? Discover voiceover. When did that come into your? I mean, because you, you've always been a ham, right? You always wanted yeah. to perform. He's you like, were. yeah. Because yeah. then <laughs> He's I, sure about I've been that. accused. I can't um, remember if I read this or someone told me on that you occasion. would sit in your room and like play records. And I was that kid. Yeah. You were like always like, hey, it's Keith Farley. You know, you were yeah, like, hey, it's Keith Farley. Yeah, that's. Oh, sorry, that's Keith Farley. It's my voice, not my voice. Yeah. yeah, that was when I was living in down in, in Long Beach. So it was yeah. KHJ, which was Boss Radio. Yeah. It kind of with K-Earth 101 is now. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of what I started out as. Yeah. Right. So you obviously, performance was something that was in your in your bones, some sort of extroverted Always. playing. Yeah. So then how did you know, I'm going to come to I LA? I was involved in theater and music. You know, I played trombone and mm-hmm. piano. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play the ukulele a lot now. Nice. Um so anything where I could be performing, um, I wanted to be doing it. So in high school, it was <clears throat> zero period, man. It was jazz zero band, period, yeah. Dixieland band. I played in a Dixieland band for a while, wow. Madrigals, jazz choir, and the radio station, which I ran my senior year. So it was all that stuff, plus Reader's Theater, mm-hmm. which is very vocally driven, uh, and then this, the musical in the spring. So I was involved. Mm-hmm with all the performing arts as much as I could be. I just, I loved it. Yeah. Still do. Do you remember when you became aware of voiceover and voice acting being something that you could do? Yeah, it was sort of, it was the fun of like cutting radio spots. Mm -hmm. That was part of it, was starting to do, to create that radio theater. And Reader's Theater is very, it's a a style of theater where you, everyone has a music stand. right. Right. And a spotlight. So you turn on the spotlight when you speak and you turn it off when you don't. And you, all the work is done in the face mm-hmm. and from the neck up. So it's a real vocally, yeah. uh, it's a real yeah. good vocal workout. So, but I had no idea. There, there was no work for 
radio theater people. Right. And it wasn't until years later when I was working in production at Klasky Chupo, yeah. where I was a production coordinator and I got the cassette tape that said, Duckman 208 radio show. And it was a, a revelation for me. It was a real aha moment for me. Like, this is where those voice actors went. Mm -hmm. This is where all those, you know, the Orson Welles of the world, all the guys that were doing yeah, radio yeah. moved into animation. And at Klasky, the process was create the, write the show, record the voices, and then animate to mm -hmm. the voices. Right. Um, at Cartoon Network, of course, they do it differently. Right, yeah, they go so the other way yeah. around. The artists right. are more in control. Um, so it was a real revelation for me, and that's when I started to think like, Hmm. I might have a little. How do I get into this? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And then what brought you to Los Angeles? Los Angeles, it was UCLA. <laughs> it was, um, I had done three years at Sacramento State. Right. Um, which was a fantastic program. And uh, one of my major mentors in my life was a professor there, Jerry Larson. And uh, I owe him a lot. Um, but it just got to be big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. Yeah and it was time to move. And rather than make a cold move into the business and finish up my degree at Sacramento yeah. State, I figured it would be more of a segue, <laughs> to use a radio term. A natural yes. segue. A natural yeah. segue to um, kick over and, and finish my degree at UCLA. Beautiful. And it was a, it was a good move. I met a lot of people that I that I still am close with and still yeah. work with today. Yeah. That's cool, man. Did you have, because there's a lot of people that watch the show that have radio backgrounds, and they have that, you know, plight of, you sound like you're on the radio. Did yeah. you have that, um, I don't want to say issue, but did you have to have, did anyone ever say to you, Keith, you sound like an announcer, to announce you sound like a DJ. Did you have, because you do a lot of commercials, yeah. I mean, you do, a lot of non-announcer stuff. Did you find that you fell into that? Well, or it's no? interesting because I think in are you just that fabulous? At that period of time, <laughs> it was like I said, this adult rock thing mm -hmm. was sort of KROI was a top forty radio station, so they were moving away from that sort of yeah. good afternoon and welcome. Blah, it's crazy out right. here. And yeah. blah, to talking to the 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 program director used to always tell me, just take your normal voice and give it a bump of about fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. energy okay so that worked so um, and then as I as I got deeper into acting it really is you, you're performing mm -hmm. yeah you know what I mean yeah. it's it's less about how great is your voice yeah to how well can you how much can you draw someone in see and that's the big how difference how can you vomit in your mouth right from what? the early days you yeah. were thinking in yeah. acting terms yeah. rather than like just Smart. voicing or being like you know an entertainer with the voice you're like no no, no I'm acting mm -hmm. yeah. right you really yeah. got into that yeah you're trying to create a connection with the audience yeah, yeah. hey do you have any because you coach as well yeah mm -hmm. um, and a mighty coach I might add yes. uh, but uh, do you have any advice for maybe some people that do have a little bit kind of a, an announcer kind of thing that they can't get rid of any advice on how on things that they could do to maybe get out of that um, if they even should get out of that? You know opinion? what I mean? There's money in it. I mean, there's still, yeah, the, there's I mean, still call for that. Absolutely. The announcer is absolutely not completely dead because some people are like, oh, that's oh, not in anymore. I know, no, 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 you no, hear no. something. Don't, don't, you buy, don't buy that. Don't buy that. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Because they're out there. It's not, it's not my forte. Yeah. It's not what I'm, what I'm, it was kind of what I was built for as a kid. I mean, yeah. that was me. And the, hey, it's KHJ. And I was you yeah. know, trying to do that wacky, real Don steel thing, who I respect and love a, a bunch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's no, no there's no shame in it. Right. But there's a lot of call for for connection. I think that's a real yeah. Um, that's a that's a really it's a great thing to see. I love what you just said. Yeah. Connection. There's a call Be for connection. Yeah, because even if you have an announcerish approach to things. As long as you are connecting mm -hmm. with people, you're not right. just like in your own world, now you're putting in what we need in today's market. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I Very much that. so. And there's also the, the sort of the, the comedy read, the everyman, yeah. uh, in commercials in particular. And then there's the thing that I'm, I'm getting a lot of lately, which is sort of the ironic read. 
Mm. That sort of announcery read yeah. that's saying absurd things. Yeah. yeah. You know that. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the, I call the, uh, that my, the, the parody, parody announcer. <laughs> right. Right. Because yeah, yeah. you're almost kind of making fun of something or the dude or whatever. Right. Mm. Yeah. I love yeah. that. They're fun. Yeah. They're really, they are really fun. fun. And so many commercials, so many brands are using that. Yes. You know, yes. Little Caesars, for example, and hey, this episode is not sponsored by them, although <laughs> it, it should be. be. Um, um, uh, but they do that all the time on a lot there. of commercials. You know, Little Caesars coming at you, but you're yeah. like, oh wow, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Well, and it's funny now because when you hear it, it stands out more. Where, whereas it used to be kind of that's what it was. Now, when you hear it, you kind of listen more because you go, ooh, it's kind of novel. Yeah, yeah. it's drawing you in. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to sort of barking at you. Yeah, it's sort of. And again, that's just the excitement of it. They're trying to get your attention and get mm -hmm. you excited. That's exactly. what the announcer is yeah. there to do. Yeah. Well, since we kind of went there a little bit, let's let's talk about the VO Lounge. Yeah. We have this totally rad little setup. George Whittem did yep. it. George right? Whittem. We love our um, George. Who's that? George Whittem. <laughs> Who's George Whittem? He's a he's a YouTube uh, star uh, as well. George Whittem is a freaking wizard. rock star. That's he who is what he is. So yes. amazing, yeah. lovely guy. Yes. And. Chops for days, man. He knows yeah. his stuff. Yeah. He really he's does a, know his stuff. He's a magician. Stuff, he can and take a space, and all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, it does work. Yeah. yeah. You know what I love so about skilled. George? Let's talk about George Let's for a second. About Just for two seconds. What I'm I love about this George. This segment sponsored by George Whittem. <laughs> yeah, George the Tech. <laughs> yeah. GeorgeTheTech.com, by the way. Yes. So what I love about or George. Whittem's World is a bunch of that stuff. Absolutely. He's got some great stuff out every Monday night. I'll be on that show in a couple weeks. Yeah. But what I love about him is that he really is complicated as he thinks, you know, about the sound and, you know, the actual, uh, you know, the actual, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Acoustics. Uh, technical. Yeah, the technical mm -hmm. side of uh, what he talks about. He tries to simplify things yeah. for people. Yeah. And so you're not buying necessarily the most expensive something, but he's like, well, actually for this room mm -hmm. to get it to sound right, all you really need is this. Yep. Yeah. As opposed to yeah. saying, oh, we got to redo everything because we have to have the schlem and a dicker and <laughs> it's got to go this way. It's got to be a slanted at 90%. Right. right, so right. He doesn't do right. that. He's nope. very practical. And he knows all the layers. Like he goes, we're going to do this because of this, because of this. He's just, his. I love how his brain works. He really He's understands really smart. all He's also the kind of guy that I can shoot a text to yeah. Yeah. with a technical question. Yeah. And you get two sentences back and you mm -hmm. go, oh. Totally. Yeah. So the VO Lounge. You had a vision. I did. And George made it physically happen. But what was your vision from the coaching philosophical point for you? Why did you want to do it? I'm, I feel like I, I'm standing in the middle of, I, I've been working for, for 20 plus years now with the best actors in the business. Everybody mm -hmm. from E.G. Daly to Steve Bloom, mm -hmm. Nolan North, everybody. And they're sort of, they're all like sort of around my age. And just recently I've sort of, started teaching, you know, doing guest spots in classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've noticed all these really super talented young folks who were coming up. And also it happened on um, Final Fantasy XV, um, which I had the privilege of casting and directing. Very just, cool, man. Yeah. What a, that's, that's a, it was a huge, huge yeah. gig. Yeah. We Absolutely. got the main cast, we got the secondary cast, we got the tertiary cast, and then we just, it was wave after wave of filling in all these roles. So I went through all my peeps, and then I went through all the recommendations, and then I got down to the point where I was like, I still needed another 30, 40, 50 people. So mm -hmm. I started, it was great, because I got to go back and listen to demos. Nice. I got to go back, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, yeah, bring me mm -hmm. so-and-so, because they're great, and they're easy, and they'll be fun. Yep. It was like, no, who's who else is out there? So yeah. the agents, God bless them, sent me all their 20, 40, 60 kids, and I just went through demos and was like, yeah, bring me that guy, bring me that one, bring me this guy, and met these up and comers. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to take the experience that I've gained over 20 years and yeah. be able to, to share that yeah. uh, with folks who are training, who are coming up, who, mm -hmm. who are looking to do this work. Yeah. yeah. So that was, the, that was the spark. That's so cool, man. And I was walking through, we, we had this house that was a, kind of a U-shaped house. Mm -hmm. And a couple owners earlier had built a, a, made a room out of the courtyard. Right. And he'd split it in two because he had five kids. So I think there was one little bedroom on each <laughs> side. So I put my office in one of the bedrooms and I put my kid in one of the tiny bedrooms and gave her the other one as a, uh, 
as a sitting lounge where she could receive oh, cool. visitors. Yes. Which she never used. It just became a hallway. Right. Oh. And one day I was walking through the hallway and I stood in the doorway between <laughs> her room and the other room and I kind of went, if this wall went away, this is a pretty good sized room. Yeah. And I started thinking about watching dropping. a little too much HGTV <laughs> there. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Demo. Yeah. yeah. Bring me a sledgehammer. Yeah. Let's get going. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to knock out that wall. And uh, it's about that time I called George just to to get the specs yeah. and figure out yeah. how to do it and do it right. Yeah. Um, and uh, George designed me a great room, very similar to this one, which had a nice little rectangular booth in one corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking at it and I kept walking around the room and trying to figure out how it was going to work. And I I realized that in order to to make the room viable for teaching, that the booth had to be on a 45. It had to cut that corner yeah. mm -hmm. so that I could get eight or ten folks in the in the facing corner, in the right, adjacent right. corner. And uh, he was able to accommodate that and make it sound sweet. And um, it's up and running, and it's it's just been a blast. That's we have my first class. Man. We're doing Whoops. our third. Hey, uh, take it easy there. Uh, mm -hmm. Third episode of the first class uh, tomorrow night. So That's just awesome. a month old. It's just a little baby. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm really eager to to see it grow. Yeah. And to cool. be yeah. able to reach out and give back and and share with with the folks who are coming. Yeah. Up. If you guys go to keithfarley.com, it's down on the screen. Um, and you can go, click on VO Lounge. You can get more information and follow you on Twitter. Indeed. The Twitter. The Twitters. Um, so. Wait, wait. I wanted to ask him a quick question in yeah, regards to the uh, video game that you were just talking about. Because a lot of people ask this. And I mean, I kind of know the answer, but I want all them to know. On an average, because you've cast some of these huge video games, on an average, how many voice actors actually would get cast? On average? Well, for example, the one that you worked on. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 15. Oh my gosh. That so was huge. So, like I said, God, that's a tough one. Probably close to two to 300. Okay, that's beautiful. I'm gonna guess. Yeah, and, and the reason why I, I ask that is because a lot of times people say, oh, I wanna get into animation or I wanna make an animation demo. Right. And I always say, <clears throat> do you have a video game demo? Right. And they say, well, no. And I said, well, you would add more value to your repertoire mm -hmm. if you have a video game demo because there's more action there. What do you mean? Well, think about it. In an animation show, you got how many people that are working on it? Eight. Eight? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's it. And that stays on for years. Right. You know, a game comes out like Final Fantasy 15, right. and 300 people get work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can I tell a secret? Yeah. Can I give your can Well, I give first the of all, are you allowed to tell can a secret? I give a, can I give a little secret? Yes. A little behind the, pull the curtain aside? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I'm casting video games, I will often bypass the animation demo and go to the commercial demo. Wow. Because, because I want to hear, real. I want to hear the actor's natural voice. Wow. Yeah. I want to hear that. So good. I do a lot of that. And I think it, uh, the demo reel for the interactive demo, mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely right. Um, there's a lot, a lot of work in interactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Animation is sexy and you get, it pays really well. Yeah. Because it keeps paying and paying and of paying. Of course. But um, volume of work yeah. is, in, is in interactive. Yeah. yeah. What advice can you give to those people watching who really want to pursue, and let's stay specific to video games, what kind of skill set, what kind of chops do they need to bring to the table because the bar keeps raising. It does. So just because maybe it's your first game doesn't mean that you get that entry level freshman kind of expectation. You've got to come into the stream. You've got to come in and deliver. Yeah. 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 I always tell students um, to think about their career as if they're going for a master's degree mm. in voiceover. Right. So, many, so often, I think there's less of it now because there's more respect for the industry is more respect right. for the craft of voiceover. But when I started out 15, 20 years ago, people would come up to me all the time, like, people told me I have a great voice. Yes. How do I get into voiceover? Mm -hmm. um, and I said the same thing then that I say now, but... Which is? Treat it like a master's degree. Take classes, do your homework, do your research. Um, your thesis is your demo. Mm -hmm. Don't make a demo until you've done the work. You know, so you can class. show off something. It yes. may take you six months. It may take you five years. 
because everybody comes in at a different level right, of, right. of talent. So theatrical training is great because it focuses, again, on the voice. Mm -hmm. um, being able to have a nimble voice where you can create characters. Um, improv training is great because so much of it is done on the fly. Yep. Um, and it also, when you walk into a video game, you are walking into a room with a microphone and a script you've never seen before, usually. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you to create that world. So improv training is key. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. just to steep yourself in video games, to know the universe, to know what's going on in the world. Yeah. The same way you would with animation, the same way I do when I'm driving around, yeah. switching radio stations, looking for the commercials. Yeah. Yes. Instead yes. of just playing the game, why not find out who produced it yeah. What types of characters are being cast in that mm -hmm. particular game? Because now you're getting to know the why of the occupation, not yep. just the how. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that helps a lot. And the difference between a, um, an RPG like Final Fantasy or what I call the of games, uh -huh. the Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, mm -hmm. Gears of War, mm -hmm. all those games are, it's a certain genre. Yeah. Right. Um, and then your fantasy games, you know, your sword and sorcery games, the sort of wacky cartoony games that are yeah. out there too. Yeah. Just to know, like, who are you going in for? Mm -hmm. So Keith, um, uh, this might be a silly question, but does the fact that you are a, a director, a great director, and that you really think, um, in that perspective, do you, because you're also a performer, does does the directing side help you with the performance side, personally? Or does it get in the way? Boy, that's a double-edged sword. It is. Or are you, you your what? own worst nightmare? I'll tell you what, <laughs> people ask me, there was a, a question came up in a, in a mm. class I was teaching, like, well, how many, how many takes do you do mm. on an audition? In the vault. <laughs> exactly. And you I said, was like, hundreds. And I said, <laughs> I, what, I've, what I've tried to do is I'll do one and then listen back and then do a second with it's kind of switch hats, put on the director hat when I'm listening back, like, okay, I could do that better. I can make that change. Do the second one. If I go to a third take, I'm just as likely to do 17. Right. Mm. Now, you open the Pandora's now, box. And then you go back and you're like, oh, that first take is really good. Yeah. yeah. Then you but pull now, that down and send it off. Yeah. I want to get a little bit deeper into this now. Yeah, yeah. Because as a director, so when you're listening back to your own audition, yeah. are you listening to, are the right are the words said correctly, and are, are the technical stuff, or are you listening for, am I believing myself as an actor? Do I believe this character? Yeah, that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. I listen back to myself to make sure. So this is where the balance, for from my perspective, the balance between technical facility and emotional connection comes in. Yeah. Because you, nobody cares if I feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I making you feel it? Right. That's the important thing. So I do listen for technical facility because if you're swallowing the product mm -hmm. name or if you're swallowing, we've got to go over that mountain to get to the monastery to take it back from the conquerors. You got to make sure that you're hearing mountain, monastery take it back back yes. from the conquerors <laughs> yeah. right you yeah. got to make sure you're hitting the important information for the player so i i view everything i do as with a servant attitude yeah that i'm a servant to the writer and i'm a servant to the audience mm -hmm. so i want to get whatever it is whether it's a commercial or a video game or animation or audiobook you want to communicate what the author put on the page to the yeah. audience as clearly as you possibly can. So part of that is technical facility and hitting the right words. Mm -hmm. And the other part is an emotional resonance. So if I had to say I'm probably 60-40, 75-20 technical. Yeah. Okay. And are you pretty good at going, okay, great, it's done, I'm leaving it? Or do you go, mm -hmm. does it stay with you? Yes. <laughs> yes, on both. <laughs> I forget about it. He's like, you're not my priest. I'm not in the confession. No, I no sometimes I'll just be like, so there are days where I'll just go, that's it. I had a couple of auditions this morning that were just easy peasy. I just right. did three in a row. I didn't even stop. I had two. I just clicked over to the next piece, did that three times, went back and listened. It was like, yeah. Look at you being all carefree. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, but then. 
than there was last week <laughs> yeah. when I was in there like, no, 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 no. I gotta, uh, I've yeah, gotta get like, out of the control chair it. and I gotta go back what in the booth and I gotta do it again. <laughs> to talk into the microphone again. Oh. Well, that's part one with Keith Farley. Uh, make sure you stick around next week for part two. Yes, and don't forget to leave your questions and comments below. And also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Leo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.